Welcome back guys, today I'm gonna be sharing with you how you should begin your fitness journey. For one reason or another, you've clicked on this video, and for that, I'm proud of you because this means that you've taken your first step towards a better you. When starting a fitness journey, especially from scratch and without ever being in a gym environment, or when you don't know what even a calorie is or how to count your calories properly, it can be very intimidating for any individual coming into this because it seems like there's just a ton of information. It's like drinking from a fire hydrant. You know, you get some key terms here and there, don't really know what they mean, and just try to slam it all together and hope for the best. But hopefully with this video, I can shed some light on some of those terms, but also keep it simple so you can focus on what's really important when you're beginning your journey. So a lot of times when you begin your fitness journey, you immediately think about exercising and workouts how you should structure your workouts, how you should integrate it into your daily life and routine, and that's good. However, I think the most important thing that's often overlooked, especially in the beginning, is your diet, which is the most important thing in my opinion. There's even sayings that you may have heard already, which is abs are made in the kitchen, that's entirely true. And I also believe it's really hard to outwork a bad diet. So if you're eating like shit, feeling like shit, then more than likely you're gonna look like shit. So first you're gonna have to look at your diet and see what changes need to be made to better suit your goal. And your goal may vary. You know, if you're coming in for strength purposes or if you're coming in for weight loss purposes, that goal is gonna be different, which means your diet's also gonna vary. Your diet's gonna vary from someone that's trying to lose weight or someone's trying to gain weight on a bulk. So to do that, I'm gonna go over with you real simply how you can structure your diet. And to be able to change your diet, you're gonna to need to figure out what your goal is. Are you trying to build strength? Are you trying to lose weight? Are you trying to gain weight? These are all very critical questions that go into building your diet. And now I'm gonna share with you a little bit of nutritional information that should help you be able to structure and customize your diet yourself without having to have a trainer. So with that being said, what I want you to do is for the next three days, keep eating like normal. I want you to be eating like normal, not restricting yourself, not increasing what you're eating. I want you to write down everything you consume. Unless it's water, you're writing it down. And on every item you write down for the day, I want you to record the calories, I want you to record the carbs, and I want you to record the protein. These are the most important values you need to be looking at right now. We can worry about fat later, but for now, we're gonna simplify everything and make sure it's easier for you to understand, and hopefully this video will be short and to the point. And so now for every day, for the next three days, when you write down all that food that you consume for those three days, I want you to add up all the calories, all the carbs, all the protein separately, and divide all of them by three to get an average for those three days. So you should come out with the average caloric intake for those days, your average protein intake, and your average carbohydrate intake. And now this is very important because this is gonna help you customize your diet. And so what I recommend if you're trying to lose weight, I want you to take that average caloric intake and decrease it by 300 to 500 calories, depending on how aggressive you want the cut to be or the caloric deficit to be. And on the flip side, if you're trying to gain weight, I want you to bring the calories up by 300 or 500. And after following this for about a month or two, you'll see the scale, you know, start balancing out, whether you're gaining or losing weight, you'll reach a number and the progress will kind of slow down. And so that means we're gonna to have to readjust. And from here, this is when you have to take into account how low your calories are and how high they are and what you wanna do from here. So if you're trying to gain more weight, and you're not really cared about muscle, you can cut back on the exercise in a little bit, increase the calories a little bit, and that's gonna put you in a better state to be able to put on weight. Now, if you're wanting to build strength during that, I recommend you even increase the intensity of your workout, if not keep it the same, and increase the calories. You know, if you're not gaining any weight, it's very simple, you hear it all the time, you have to eat more. There's no shortcuts to gaining weight. If you're increasing the intensity in your workouts and practicing progressive overload by coming into the gym every week, hitting it with the same, if not more intensity, and increasing the weight you're lifting, you're gonna put yourself in a state to build strength and muscle, especially while fueling the body with the extra excess calories that it needs to be able to put on that extra muscle and the extra weight. Because our bodies do not wanna put on extra muscle because it's very taxing calorically on our body. So on the flip side, if you're trying to lose weight, let's say your average was 2,500 calories, and you wanted a more aggressive approach, so you did 2,000 calories a day, and you're hitting the gym with the same intensity or working out or not even working out, uh, what you could do if you're not even working out at all is supplement with more exercise. That's gonna burn more calories and that's gonna allow you to drop some weight. So if you're at 2,000 calories, you've already dropped 500, the scale's kinda bouncing out, I recommend increasing the amount of exercises you're doing. And if you're not doing any, you need to implement it then. And if you're doing exercises already, you need to be increasing the intensity and maybe utilizing some high intensity interval training. For example, sprinting. Now for those that have their calories, let's say your average is already 1,600 calories. That's already a low caloric daily, especially if you're a male. 
I don't know if I would go lower no matter what. I don't think I'd go lower whether I was male or female than 1,300 calories a day. So if you're getting anywhere close to that, like 1,500 calories, you need to be implementing more exercises or looking into other means besides just reducing our caloric intake because at that point, it's unhealthy. It's not healthy. Whatever you're doing, I don't think that's healthy. With that point, you need to go have a consultation with a personal trainer or a professional nutritionist. However, going back to our example, if you recorded everything for three days, averaged it out, you were having 2,500 calories a day, you decreased it by 500 calories when you're losing weight. During that time, he's in a very catabolic state, which means his body is not only gonna wanna drop off fat, but also muscle. Because like I said earlier, muscle's very taxing on the body calorically. So to prevent this, we're gonna increase our protein we're intaking by 0.5 grams per pound of body weight or up to one gram per pound of body weight. So we're gonna keep our protein intake relatively high. So if this individual is 180 pounds, we need to be getting at least 100 to 160 grams of protein in to mitigate the amount of muscle loss that's induced from the catabolic state. I know this can be a little confusing and a little intimidating, but I recommend you replay this video and learn the terms that I'm saying and try to figure it out for yourself. I think it's more beneficial for you to learn and be totally independent and in control of your diet and exercise routine than allowing someone else to micromanage you and create it for themselves because you know yourself better than anybody else does. Now, for those of you that may be struggling with dieting and losing weight and maybe even be a little overweight right now, I recommend you look into intermittent fasting. I think there's a lot of benefits in doing intermittent fasting. And for those that don't know what intermittent fasting is, it's basically a period of time where you don't eat. You don't consume any calories. And usually most individuals will go from like midnight, 12 a.m., to 12 p.m., which is at lunch, so it's a 12-hour fast. So that means you only have about 12 hours max of a feeding window for the day. So that means there's less time for you to eat, and if there's less time for you to eat, it means you're gonna be more satiated closer to bedtime, because even if you have like two meals during that time, there's only so much time you can eat before you go back to bed. And I like having a protein shake before bed, even one of the benefits to having one before bed. Look at this video here. But I'm usually full before I go to bed and I sleep good. And I'm also not very hungry when I wake up. And I like how light my body feels from morning till lunchtime. Personally, I enjoy intermittent fasting and there's also abundant other health benefits to using intermittent fasting, such as increased IGF factor, which is growth hormone, and also having the ability to increase your cellular health. Now that we talked about a little bit of dieting and nutrition, now we're gonna be talking about our weightlifting or exercise. So for this, I recommend you start out very basic and you start out very small. I recommend you don't go to the gym with Taudi. I'm gonna be in here, I'm gonna kill it for the next two hours, especially if you don't have a lot of experience prior because you're gonna have really bad delayed onset muscle soreness the next day or the next day after that. And you're gonna be laid up in bed or at work and be unbelievably sore, whether you're walking around doing daily activities or if you're just trying to take a shit because your whole body's gonna be crying out in pain no matter what you're doing because it's just the soreness of it because your body's not used to it and it's a big shock to the body. So what I recommend, especially when you're beginning and you're coming into it, I recommend you keep it simple. Even if you're at home right now, write your little program out, you know, do your push-ups, three sets of push-ups till failure, do your uh, three sets of sit-ups till failure, and do your three sets of air squats till failure. You know, have a little full body workout, nothing too crazy, but I want it to go over 30 minutes of training. If you feel like you need to increase that, you know, pretty quick, go for it. But I think if you're a complete beginner, you should start out very small and then work your way into the gym after doing some calisthenic exercises, such as at home movements, uh, you know, find you a pull-up bar, buy you one, buy you a dip bar, and that way you can do pull-ups, chin-ups, dips, Grow those triceps, grow those biceps. You wanna look at at-home workouts, you can also check out one of our other videos with the exercises I think you can benefit from the most by doing those at the house. And by being able to do those at the house without access to a gym, I think they're very great to implement for any beginner and then go into the gym. But before you start working out of the gym, so just hitting barbell flat press or bench or doing squats with barbells, I really recommend you look at other YouTube videos or some tutorials I have on how to properly do those movements so you don't go in there and you injure yourself. I recommend you keep it at a weight you can control until you build your stabilizers up because you don't want to jump in, load the bars up real heavy, and risk an injury that's going to set you back months. And now the last tip I have for you guys is you hear this all the time, but it's to stay consistent. And the reason you hear this all the time is because it's so hard, especially for beginners to do. And that's because it takes on average at earliest about two months to build a new habit. So that means the, for a month, even if you go to the gym and then you start slacking towards the end of that next month, you know, you're about a month and a half into training and you know, life started to hit you, you just start to fall out of the gym 
And then, you know, it's six months gone by and you're like, wow, I, I almost had it. You know, I was almost there. I almost had it in my routine and I really slipped and now I've let myself go any further. Stay consistent, force yourself, go outside the house. When it's time to go to the gym, you feel like you don't want to, go sit your ass in that car, turn the car on, and you're either gonna shut it off, go back in, feel like a failure, or you're gonna stop wasting gas, just letting it idle, and you're gonna take your ass to the gym. I promise you, if you can just get inside the gym, you'll do something. Go through the movements if you have to. I know some days I come down to the gym myself and I'm not even there, I don't even wanna be here. And some of the days I do that, those are the best days I have. I usually wind up either having a PR or I'll have the greatest pump that I've had in, in a long time. It's only gonna benefit you by showing up. Now, if I go to the gym and I, you know, I'm, I'm half-assing all my shit, I'm not really focused on it, I go home, I go home. If I can't, if I can't mentally lock in and I can't do it, well, I'm not gonna waste my time any further. I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna eat good, I'm gonna get some sleep, and we're gonna come back the next day and go again. It's really hard, especially for blue collar workers that are working you know, eight to 12 hours out in the heat or doing manual labor. But if you can force yourself to just build that routine and just go, just go, build it into your daily routine, you will see the progress. I'm proud of you guys for not only clicking on this video, but also proud of you guys for staying this far and listening to everything I have for you guys. I'm here for you. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments down below. I'd love to get back to them. My DMs are also open. Hope you guys have a good morning and a good night whenever you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one.